perfect your resume. All right, career expert Tracy Willen joins us live via Skype. Tracy, my daughter just graduated from Sac State yesterday. I'm ready. Congratulations to her. Thank you. So what do you think is the number one mistake that uh, students or graduates right out of college make? Right, so I think the number one mistake is they spam every job opening with a generic resume. And job openings are very customized, and we need to customize our resumes today to answer the requirements. And so how do you accurately do that? Do you take note of what they're actually looking for? Are there certain buzzwords, or what do you recommend? Actually, when you look at a job description, I would recommend going to the bottom because that's where the requirements are. And if you don't meet 80% of the requirements, then I would let that job go and not spam it with your resume. Once you look at the criteria, you would also respond to it, customizing your experience, your skills, and your coursework and how that's relevant to that job opening. And you're talking about your resume. I've heard about kind of customizing a cover letter, um, but you're saying actually do that to your resume. Oh, yes. Uh, you, you need to customize your resume and you need to customize the cover letter. The cover letter can be short, it can be powerful, but you really need to show the employer that you read the job description and how you are the best person for that job. Is the rule still one page resume or can they go two, especially if they have a lot of technology you know, in their background? So what I would recommend for students is one page. View it as a press release. You got to put the most powerful things in that first page. An adult can have, or seasoned adult can have two pages. I also recommend a powerful first page with an appendix as a second page because if the recruiter or the scanner really never gets to the second page, you want to make sure that you catch attention on the first page. Use okay. the second page as an appendix. And you always want references? You, or do you put references upon request? I've seen both. Which is the better route? I think, you know, view a resume as critical real estate. So I actually would not put just references upon request. I wouldn't waste the real estate on listing names because you might have different references for different jobs. What are some oh, other mistakes that they may make, some things to avoid? Well, I think one thing that students can think about is how to properly use social media. Social media can really enhance your brand. So let's say you were a finance major and you're pursuing finance jobs. Well, why not use your Facebook to showcase your blog? Why not use Twitter to retweet key financial articles? Oh. Help use social media as an extension of your brand because you will be Googled. Every, every recruiter, every hiring manager will look you up and look at all of your profiles. And what do you think about having social media, like your account, as private? Because a lot of people do that as well. Is that a good thing or is that a red flag for an employer? No, I think you can have a private account. You can also have a professional account. Um, you know, I have both. People do that today. You have much more ability to really control what's on your social media sites. All right. There's how you can get a hold of her. Tracy Whalen, thank you so much for joining us today. Very thank you. valuable tips. Thank you. Take care Thank now. Thank you. A small public design school is showing.